Hey guys, welcome back. Today's episode is very short. We're just looking at two verses, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. So if you haven't gotten your Bible to that page yet, go ahead and do that. In terms of background, there isn't much. I just want to tell you a little bit of structural stuff. So in these two verses, you can split them up like this. Verse 8, Paul is concerned with your thoughts. And verse 9, Paul is concerned with your actions. Okay, so thoughts and then actions. And in terms of key terms, uh, there are a lot of terms that make sense, right? These are familiar words when he says in verse 8, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, whatever is lovely, all that stuff. It's not advanced English, neither is it advanced Greek if you care, but you have to think specifically what does Paul mean by all these words? I would say in context of Philippians, Paul, when he uses those words, is just referring to anything that has to do with pursuing Christ. Do you remember in chapter 3 when Paul says that he presses on to the upward goal of the call of God in Christ? Uh, he talks about pursuing Christ, knowing Christ, experiencing the power of his resurrection, all that stuff. I would say that that's what Paul is thinking about because in his mind, there are a lot of things in this world that are pure, excellent, lovely, commendable, all those words. But the one that is most pure, excellent, lovely, just, true, that's the pursuit of Christ. It's to know him in relationship with him. So that's what I would suggest that means. Now, as you think about these two verses, I want to give you a question to focus on. How come in verse 9, Paul can say, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you? How can he guarantee that God will be with this person if they practice these things? And to help you figure this out, I always suggest go back to chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. If you understand chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, you will understand what Paul is saying in chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. So with that said, go ahead and read it on your own, think about it, and then come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So to answer the question that I gave to you in just one sentence, I would say this. God is at work in those who live for him. That's how I would summarize the answer. That's what Paul is communicating both in chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 and here in chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. The reason that Paul can say, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you is because he's already told us in chapter 2 verse 12 and 13. Look, if you are walking in a manner worthy of the gospel, if you are living in the way that God wants you to live, it's because God is at work in you, right? Because that's what he said. He said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for because it is God who is at work in you to will and to work his good pleasure. And notice also in chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, to will and to work, that's also about the mind and action, right? Your thoughts and what you do. Same thing that Paul is talking about here in chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Think on these things and do these things. See, Paul's categories are very consistent, right? And this is a really good practical view on what it means to be close to God and experiencing God's presence. I think a lot of times we think about being close with God or walking with God as like an emotional high, like a sort of sentimental experience. But really what Paul is saying here is, look, if you're walking in a manner worthy of the gospel, if you're living in a way where you will and work for God's good pleasure, God is with you. And the reason why is because you don't naturally do this. Because naturally, we don't want God. Naturally, we don't want to live in his way. But that's evidence that God is at work in us if we are thinking and doing his will and work. So in practice, if we live this out, we can be thankful because we can know that this is proof that God is with us and that he's at work in us because we are doing things that our sinful selves wouldn't naturally want to do. So I hope this was helpful and thought-provoking. I'll see you next time.